Hello friends, welcome back to the shop. Today is Sunday, February 13th, day before Valentine's Day. Ah, it's a cold one here today. Crazy weather. Uh, February, right? Uh, yesterday the high was 55. We got up to 60 on Friday. Uh, today it's snowing and we got accumulation. And, uh, don't know, we're probably not going to get much, but I don't know how much of it's going to melt before tomorrow, and tomorrow the high is going to be 27, so we might get some ice, and ah, uh, yeah, winter, always fun. I am uh, smoking my, my Bari, and I am having a rare second bowl of Pegasus, and there's a reason for that. So I... I titled it this video something like taste change or something like that and you know you you hear this a lot I used to really enjoy smoking this and now I can't stand it you know for, for me personally two things that come immediately to mind one is Captain Black original which I smoked for years and was the only tobacco I knew and now I've tried to smoke it in recent years and just can't. I mean, I just can't. I, I don't get any pleasure out of it at all. So that's a case where I think my tastes really have changed. The other is Latakia. I smoked a lot of English blends uh, in my post-Captain Black phase um, for a long time. And now I occasionally get a craving. Um, go through a couple of months in the winter where I'll enjoy not often more than a bowl a day. Um, sometimes not even that, but uh, I can I can enjoy it in certain blends and it's, you know, it's not like every English blend is great. Uh, I got to be careful with them, but it's you know, not like it used to be for sure. So that happens. I mean, I, I think we would all agree that that happens. Um, but is it always the case? Is it always the case when you go off a blend that your taste has changed? Or is it maybe something else? So what got me thinking about this is, is Pegasus this morning. And you know, I've been in a routine... Uh, probably for a couple of years now, it seems. Um, it's hard to keep track of time these days. I've been in a routine where my first bowl in the morning is Pegasus. That's what I enjoy. It used to be Carter Hall, but I moved away from that and actually rarely smoke Carter Hall now. But Pegasus has taken the place of Carter Hall for me. But just that one bowl. And then I would switch to Haunted Bookshop. And I'd smoke Haunted Bookshop throughout the day. Usually around, you know, if it's, if it's a work day um, and I'm working from home, about 3 o'clock I would have something different. And something different could be a Virginia, Virginia Perique. Um, could be a, a, an English blend uh, if, if I'm in that phase. And then I'd switch back to Haunted Bookshop. And then in the evening, you know, after dinner, relaxing, watching TV or, or reading or something like that, I'd have something different again. Um, just one bowl and then probably another bowl of Haunted Bookshop before going to bed. So that's been my routine for a couple of years now. And parts of that routine are quite old. I mean, I've been smoking Haunted Bookshop for, well, since... Um, I got a sample pack from Craig Tarler back when Cornell and Deal was just Craig and Patty Tarler. Um, and one of the five tobaccos, I think it was five tobaccos, uh, that I got one ounce samples of was, was Haunted Bookshop. And he kind of forced me to, to try that because I was in my English phase. Um, so I just wanted English blends. I, I didn't think I would like a Burley blend. And he... So you got to try this. And yeah, I'm glad I did. So that's been a long time uh, companion. 
Pegasus is a bit newer, uh, you know, a couple of years now. I've had it in the past. I you know, thought it was good, but I never thought of it as a daily uh, smoke. So, you know, things change, things come in and out over time for sure. And of course, there's always the fact that sometimes tobaccos stop. You know, so Carter Hall, not that long ago, we thought we lost it, uh, which is one of the reasons I shifted more heavily to Pegasus. But for the past maybe two weeks, I just haven't been enjoying that first bowl. Uh, so Pegasus, for those that haven't tried it, it's a mixture of uh, Burleys and Virginia. So it's uh, three different Burleys, and it's a nice selection of Burleys. It's got some Q cut, it's got uh, white Burley and dark Burley. And it's got a couple of Virginias in it. I think they're mostly red, um, nothing sharp really. And it's got a good dose of unflavored black Cavendish, which just kind of ties it all together, provides a little bit of sweetness, but, but mostly just ties it all together. The Virginias are sweet. The, it's very burly forward to me, and I love burly. But over the past couple of weeks, it's been developing a, a sharpness, um, which I don't like. Uh, that's one of the reasons I've moved away from a lot of Kias, is that they tend to have this sharp edge to them that I don't like. And this was just, it, the flavor profile had really changed. I'm pulling out the Virginia a lot more, and the Burley just wasn't getting to the level that I like, and it was starting to taste sharp to me. So this morning I said, let's, let's take some time. I'm gonna really dissect this bowl, not this bowl, but the one I had prior to this. I spend some time with it and I'm going to think through, you know, what am I experiencing? Why, why is this not doing it for me? And when I slowed down and really paid attention to it, I was able to pull out the things that I, that I love about Pegasus. And I enjoyed it. I could also pull out those Virginia components that the sort of more uh, I don't want to say sharp, but tangy. And I realized what had happened was I was focusing on those more as I was just mindlessly puffing. You know, I wasn't really... There, there are times when you, when you sit back with a bowl of tobacco and you say, let me experience this. Let me take it apart and, you know, really pay attention to what I'm doing. And there are times when you just want to puff on a pipe while you're reading, catching up on emails, whatever. I've been really busy lately and, and in the mornings in particular. So most of my time spent with Pegasus has been the pipes in my mouth and I'm doing something. I also noticed that, you know, I've been smoking a lot more Virginias lately. It's just been, I've just kind of accumulated some, some open tins of Virginias that, I, that I'm working through. So that's something else that I would have during the day. Those, those two times when I would have that something else, they are pretty consistently a, a Virginia, Virginia Preak. And I think what was happening is I was paying more attention to the Virginias. I was starting to really pull out the Virginia flavors a lot more in those blends. And that was leading me to focus more on that in the pe on the Pegasus. And I, since I wasn't trying to pull out the Burley, that's what was coming to the forefront for me. And it just wasn't as enjoyable a blend. This morning when I took a step back and took my time with it and actually paid attention, all the wonderful burly goodness came back. The Virginia is still there. You know, it's still wonderful. So did my taste change? Well, I guess it depends on what you call taste, right? If taste is just simply the chemical interactions of the thing in your mouth with your tongue and you ignore everything else, no, that didn't change. But if taste involves perception and, and thinking about it and, and processing it, then yeah, that did change. So I changed, but my taste in, in, a, in a pure sensory sense didn't change. 
And, you know, taste is a, is a complicated thing. You know, it involves not just what's going on in your tongue, but, but smell is a very important part of taste. Uh, if you've never tried this, I, I did this as a kid and it's always fascinated me. I still do it today. If you're chopping up an onion sometime, hold your nose and put some onion in your mouth and chew it up. It's like you're eating an apple. There's, it's impossible to distinguish. If you're holding your nose, it's impossible to distinguish between an onion and an apple, unless you see it going in your mouth. You know what it is, obviously, but smell is a very important part of taste. But what about things like texture? You know, my, my wife's a big one on texture. She, there are things she just won't eat because of the texture. She likes the flavor. So mushrooms are a good example. She likes mushroom flavor. She likes to cook with mushrooms, but then she picks them out. She won't eat them because she doesn't like the texture of a mushroom. So all these things come into play. You know, how creamy is the smoke? How, um, how, how um, much do you have to puff to get the flavor? Uh, what's the retrohale like? What, what's, you know, if you're not consciously retrohaling, how is your nasal cavities getting into play with it and how are you smelling it? What, what is the, the, the side stream, as they call it, the, the room note, although you don't really get the room note because you're so full of the, the smoke, uh, you can't really appreciate what others are, are smelling, but there isn't a component of that that's impacting on your flavor. And then what are you bringing to it? You know, what's your background that day? What have you been smoking lately? What are you expecting? Yeah, I just thought that was interesting that this was the first time I've had that experience in, you know, I stopped counting, but over 30 years of, of enjoying pipes. First time I've, I've been able to say, I don't like this, but let me find out why. And I realized I was wrong. I actually did like it. I just wasn't paying attention to the right thing. Interesting. So the, one of the best pieces of advice I've ever gotten as a pipe smoker is if you try something and you don't like it, first off, Put it away for a little bit, not years, you know, a couple days, a week maybe, and then try it again. Secondly, don't give up on it until it's gone. So get through that tin. I mean, unless it's disgusting, but it, most things aren't. Get through that tin, get through that two ounce sample, whatever it might be. And at the end of that, if you can say, I don't like this, you probably don't like it. So that's, that's advice that I've gotten, and I would add to that now that if you suddenly realize you don't like something, if you think your tastes are changing, don't just jump to something else, but take the time to try to understand why your tastes are changing. Uh, give yourself that hour with a, with a bowl of tobacco and, and just think about it. Do nothing but smoke the pipe and enjoy it, and, and try to understand what you're smoking. We don't often give ourselves that luxury. I mean, even when I have the rare uh, nothing to do, I, and you know, I'm just going to smoke a pipe and enjoy myself, I often am reading or listening, well, listening to music is okay. That's, I think that's okay. But you know, reading, watching TV, something like that, that's distracting me from, from the pipe. So yeah, give yourself that luxury if you, if you think you're going off a blend and try to, try to understand why. And maybe you are, you know, maybe you've suddenly decided you don't like Burley or you don't like Latakia, uh, but give it a chance. You might be surprised. I'm sure glad I did with Pegasus because it's a wonderful blend. It's another one of the Bob Ronowski blends. I tell you, I, I never, never had a chance to, to meet or talk to him, but uh, he, he was something else. He really blended some fine tobaccos. He's responsible for Pegasus, Haunted Bookshop, um, old Joe Krantz and, and, and others. So 
remarkable track record. So what's going on today? Well, I think I'm going to take it easy today. Uh, had a busy day yesterday. Uh, not terribly busy, but you know, it wasn't a it wasn't a day off. I, I had things I had to get done, and I like to take it easy on Sundays when I can. I'm feeling really good. Um, started to do a little bit of exercise, just a little bit. Um, I'm thinking next week I'm going to start ramping that up more. Still can't lift heavy things, but that's okay. Feeling more confident about doing things like filing and, and you know working at the lathe, working at the sander. So I'm hoping that starting tomorrow I'm going to be able to start getting back to working on pipes and get those uh, last couple pipes done and start working on other projects. So all good. All very, very good. But I'm still going to let my wife deal with the snow. It's it's not much. She'll have no problem. I think actually by by this afternoon we're just going to have to put some salt down. I don't think we're going to have to 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 sweep it. It's 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 light enough. It's accumulating on lawns and slightly on the sidewalks. So. So if you caught the live stream uh, on Friday, we had a real good time. We did the live tasting of uh, Tim Fournier's I Hate Roger Godell. It was a good time. Um, I was real happy with the way the Google Meet uh, worked out. So I'm going to try to use that in the future. Not exactly sure what I'm going to use it for, but I'm going to try to use it in the future. And uh, so that, that was good. Uh, I I did put in the video description on Friday, but I didn't get it in there until Saturday. The names of everybody that was uh, part of that, and when I had them, the YouTube links. There's a couple guys that are actively making uh, videos, both uh, Zippo and um, Street Glide. I believe that's right. Are act? Oh no. Um, Zippo and uh, Pirate Frog are actively making videos, so I, I linked to their channels. Um, I got Tim's Instagram page, and I've also got Tim's recipe as well as the source for I Hate Roger Goodell if you're interested in trying it. Um, I will copy that and put it into the description for this video as well in case you missed that one and you want to. You know, as I'm talking about it, you want to actually go and check those guys out, give them a sub, and uh, maybe get yourself some I Hate Roger Goodell. It was an interesting blend for sure. Oh yeah, I guess it's Super Bowl Sunday too. I, I tell you, I, I've gone from being a huge fan of football to somebody that just barely pays attention. That's what politics will do for you. I'm really looking forward to getting back into baseball this season, assuming they can stay out of politics. Whenever I talk like this, I always get somebody that says, well, everything's political. You know? Yeah, I know. I know that, but I consider sports to be entertainment. And I don't want to be hit with politics while I'm being entertained. I've turned off movies because of it. I've walked out of concerts because of it. I've stopped listening to music because of it. And uh, I'll stop watching baseball because of it. Because that ain't why I, if I want that stuff, I'll, I'll turn on CNN or Fox News. I, I don't watch those things because I don't want that to be constantly pouring into me. I read. I read the papers. I, I read um, various news sites. I stay up to date on things. I'm not. I'm not saying that we should isolate ourselves from current events. There are just times when I want to enjoy entertainment and not have that stuck in my head. So, if 
baseball is willing to go back to entertaining me and not trying to uh, indoctrinate me, I'm looking forward to it. Uh, well, folks, I'm getting close to the end of this. I do have some coffee today, which is quite nice. I don't know if I told you this. I, I trained my wife to make coffee while I was uh, unable to lift the, the, the full coffee pot because I use a percolator, so I got to fill it with water. I guess you'd have to do that with any coffee pot. Uh, so I trained her on how to make coffee and, and she's been making it and it's it's exactly the same as I make it but for some reason I just like it more. Whether or not she will continue I don't know but we'll see. I set it up the night before, and I have one of those um, smart plugs that I plug the coffee pot into. And then when I get up in the morning, I can tell Google to turn it on. And by the time I'm, you know, showered and dressed and whatnot, the coffee's waiting for me. So that's nice. Well, I'm now officially rambling, so <laughs> I'm going to call this to a close. I hope you've all had a great weekend, you enjoy your Sunday, and you're looking forward to a great week ahead. And until we speak again, I will look forward to talking to you all again very soon. Goodbye now.